Finding Aptasia can be difficult and a challenge for some people, and I know because I went through the battle of Aptasia, and I put together a series of videos that showed you my experience, my progression through fighting Aptasia and the overall result. But instead of having you guys watch a playlist or sending you to multiple videos, I put all three of them together. This video highlights what I did to eventually eliminate Aptasia for good, and I hope that some of this can help you in your battle. Let me know in the comments below. It's time to enlist an army of epic proportions. I took to the phone and called my LFS, also known as local fish store. Hello? Yeah, I'm looking for an army to battle some Aptasia that I have in my tank. Sorry, sir. We don't have anything at the moment. No? You don't have anything? So I grabbed my keyboard and went to the internet. I searched for my favorite website when it comes to cleanup crews, and that's reefcleaners.org. Scrolling on their website, I thought to myself, hmm, Bergie and Nudibranchs. Those seem to work. People have success with those. Let me check that out. But they were sold out. So then I searched more and found peppermint shrimp. Yes, there were a few available. To be honest, I wanted to buy them all, but I thought it would be nice to leave some for the next guy. There we go. Tin should do the trick. So I placed my order and I waited. And then, just like that, they were here. I mean, look at the size of this box. So I opened the box to inspect what was inside and I found this guy. I'm not sure if this guy is alive. And he does not look very good. So I set him aside and kept looking. Here's a bag of snails that I purchased and a bag of hermit crabs that I added to the order because anytime you're on reef cleaners, you gotta get a good amount of cleanup crew. Now looking at these peppermint shrimp, they're all individually wrapped. So I floated the bags in the sump. I mean, look at all these bags and then I acclimated them to the tank's water parameters. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I now have an army of nine. Look at this big one right here. Sad to say that one guy did not make it. He's not moving. Okay, so one guy down, not a problem. Reef Cleaners has a great DOA policy and I was refunded for one peppermint shrimp. Next, I used this big green net to catch the shrimp and then I released them into the 125 gallon reef aquarium. Now, I won't know right away if these peppermint shrimp are gonna tackle the problem that I have with Aptasia. Aptasia takes work to get rid of. Manual removal and using products like Aptasia RX are a great way to get rid of Aptasia, but when it starts to take hold, a more natural defense is in order. So I have started the war by enlisting peppermint shrimp. Now peppermint shrimp can be seen moving around the tank at night, but most of the time it just seems like they hide under rocks and just hang out. Now I am a little concerned that the hawkfish in the aquarium might go after these peppermint shrimp. so. Only time will tell. This is the beginning of an epic battle that's about to unfold. There's a handful of ways to take care of Aptasia in your reef aquarium, and we've talked about three of them here on the channel. One of them is using a product like Aptasia RX to suffocate the Aptasia. The second way is enlisting the help of peppermint shrimp to naturally eat your Aptasia. And the third way is what we're going to be talking about in this video, the Aptasia eating filefish. If you've seen the last video, I gathered an army of peppermint shrimp to help me take care of this problem. But I have so much Aptasia that a peppermint army alone is probably not going to be enough to defeat this. So in today's video, I gathered the family, we loaded up the car, and we headed out to some local fish stores in hopes to find a file fish that goes after Aptasia. And we also looked for a few more fish while we were there as well. So our first stop was Tampa Marine Warehouse. This is a great place to find saltwater and freshwater. There's a pretty good selection here and a whole bunch of corals. And right away, there is an awesome display tank full of meat corals. I mean, look how big these meat corals are. And there's some scolemia corals uh, to the left there and a nice, huge green toadstool leather coral. So I was also thinking about adding more peppermint shrimp as well, and it looks like they have some peppermint shrimp here. Oh, there they've she went. Some peppermint shrimp. We they do? Some, they've got some big ones here. They're $5. Blood reds the, are 50. Um, the blood are reds are 50. Hey guys, look at this blue lobster. 
He's neat. Is that and a chocolate crab? chip starfish right there too. Chocolate That's a cool chip. one right yep. there. I was surprised to see some of the cleanup crew that they had. They had urchins available, skunk cleaner shrimp, they had peppermint shrimp, a nice selection of bubble tip anemones that were going for $60. But they do have copper band butterflies in here. However, I'm just not seeing any file fish. Now, if you've ever been to Tampa Marine Warehouse, they do have a good selection of corals here and a lot of large colonies, a lot of big zoanthid colonies. And on this day, they had some really nice chalice corals and I wish I was looking for chalice corals because I would probably buy all of these right here. Now, against my better judgment, we did go ahead and pick up a blood red shrimp. And why is it against my better judgment, you might ask? Well, because of this guy. So as it turned out, Tampa Marine Warehouse did not have any Aptasia eating file fish. So I called up Coral Corral and they told me they had one, but not only did they have one, it was their last one, the only one that they had left. Okay, so we picked up a couple things at Marine Warehouse. Now we're stopping in at Coral Corral because they have an Aptasia eating file fish. How's it going? All right, so we're here and there is an Aptasia eating file fish somewhere. There he is, I think. Yep, right in there. $50, he's right there behind there. So we got him all bagged up and ready to go. Now, right before we left, to my surprise, my wife bought some corals and it looks like she picked up a pretty good deal. These are from the $10 frag. I was surprised about these. This has two zoas on it and then two green mushrooms. Nice. And this one has four baby red mushrooms on it. I thought that was a really? pretty good deal okay. for $10. And then these guys okay. are really cool. I somewhat recordia, but there are like at least two big ones and then a few small ones. Okay, so we made it back with a couple bags from the two different aquarium stores that we went to. So let's take a look at what's in here. We ended up picking up a blood red shrimp right there. Fish that I have been looking for is the Aptasia eating file fish. The Aptasia eating file fish is in the tank and ready for battle. Outside of the fact that this guy will go after Aptasia, I just love the way he swims around the tank. It's definitely a calm and shy little fish, but it's very mesmerizing to watch. And only time will tell if this file fish will win the battle against Aptasia. Now, a couple of months ago, I was finding Aptasia in the reef tank, and you may recall that I used a couple different methods to help eradicate the Aptasia in my aquarium. I used peppermint shrimp. I used Aptasia RX, which by the way, Aptasia RX works really well. And if you want to check out the link, I have that in the description below. But what happens when you have a lot of Aptasia? I mean, I had tons of Aptasia that was just wreaking havoc on my reef aquarium. So something had to be done. Well, if you watched the last video in this Aptasia battle series, you would have saw that I recruited an Aptasia eating file fish. Now you may be saying, a file fish, if you put a file fish in your reef tank, it's gonna eat all of your zoanthids and it's gonna just munch down on all the polyps and maybe chomp at your corals. Well, I hear you, but it's been over two months and this Aptasia eating file fish has been a model citizen in the reef tank. Now, here's one other thing I've been battling in the aquarium is that my bubble tip anemones have been a little uncomfortable lately and some of them have been moving across the reef tank. Look, there's this guy still over here. And what's funny is he will sometimes hang out there and then go back over there for a while and then travel over there. Almost like he's going on a vacation every once in a while. But I've taken out that basket that I had in here because of coralline algae and I now have two bubble tip anemones hanging out in the tank lamate. 
So, I mean, if you're looking, if you're still looking for a bubble tape anemone, I mean, let me know. Don't know how to get it to you, but still, I have two. They're just hanging out right there. Okay, so before I show you the results, real quick, what do I recommend when fighting Aptasia in your reef aquarium? After this journey that I've had with Aptasia, how I battled it, how I went about things, this is what I would recommend. If you're seeing Aptasia in your reef tank, you do want to get them out sooner than later because as they just repopulate and produce and just grow in your reef tank it can become an infestation and get out of control real quick kind of like what i went through so if you start to see some aptasia in your aquarium go ahead and start knocking it back with aptasia rx get a handle on it and get rid of it early if you start to see more and more that's when you're going to want to uh, incorporate something like peppermint shrimp to try and get uh, a natural bead on the situation and try to get them to munch down on your Aptasia. If that's not working for you, then definitely try the Aptasia eating filefish method. That's what's worked for me. It's worked for me in two occasions. I had Aptasia in my 210 gallon reef tank a few years ago, knocked it out quickly with, a, uh, with an Aptasia eating filefish. And again, I've had Aptasia in this tank and you can see we'll get to the results but you will see exactly what the aptasia eating filefish has done okay so i'm going to show you each section of the tank starting with the left side then we're going to take a look at the middle and the right side so if we compare the left side here you'll see that this rock right here is completely empty void of all aptasia all right and then let's take a look at the zoanthid rock right here so this zoanthid rock again some of these rocks i can brush off some of the detritus and debris that's sitting on the rock but you'll notice there's no aptasia here so here's this rock here on the left side of the tank no aptasia to be seen up here and you can see how riddled this side of the tank was with aptasia just wait till we get to the middle so again, no unsightly Aptasia to be found in the tank. There used to be some Aptasia right up here in these polyps that were just annoying me like crazy, but those guys are gone. Nothing by the toadstool or underneath the toadstool anymore. As you can see in the comparison shots. But yeah, but there's no Aptasia anywhere. The filefish definitely doing his job look at this guy he is eating frozen mices he's eating flake food he's eating nutrimar food he's eating anything and everything that i put in the reef aquarium and look at him he's on the hunt right now for something um but i mean he's doing really well he's doing well with prepared foods so i'm not worried about him going after any polyps or anything because hey i have a lot of zoanthids and a lot of polyps just growing in the tank and everything's doing really really well look at the polyp extension on this green toadstool leather that clownfish loves this toadstool just look how long those polyps are getting I love that toadstool it's doing great so the, the entire tank is doing great now it is eradicated of aptasia and there's a few things that i need to do maintenance wise that i'm gonna fill you guys in on a later video and show you how I maintain this 125 gallon reef tank, but all is well right now. So the Aptasia eating filefish has been working hard. There's no Aptasia anywhere except right up there. Look at that Aptasia, just one more, one, one Aptasia left. And that's a big guy too. That's like, that's like the mother Aptasia. So you can see I'm really happy with the Aptasia eating filefish results. I'm very happy and pleased with him eradicating pretty much every single piece of Aptasia except for that one right up here in the corner, which I could probably just scrape off with a razor blade. But you know, Aptasia, if you don't get all of them, they do like to just come back. But I'm not worried about it because I have the filefish taking care of things. So if you enjoyed this video and you like what you saw, go ahead and click or tap your screen to watch this video right here. I know you're gonna love it and it's gonna help you in your reef aquarium journey. Thank you so much for watching, liking, and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.